You tired of losing packs? It's probably because that stimmy bullshit you're sending your buddy for triple the price got holes poked in it. These don't poke holes. These bags make it. Touchdown! These bags made it! This asshole didn't use touchdown bags. So now his pack's a day late. He was gonna spend his Saturday taking his kids to the park and maybe a movie. Now, these little bastards are gonna be eating Top Ramen and watching YouTube. Touchdown! These bags make it! You spent top dollar on the best exotic indoors in the world, but the mailman intercepted. Should've got a touchdown bag. Touchdown! These bags make it! I just got a call from a dear friend on the East Coast. Touchdown! My bag's made it! Looks like Dickhead can't afford the new Yeezys because his shit bags didn't touch down in North Florida. Should've got a touchdown bag! These bags make it! Touchdown! Trying to sell your depth as ends? Put a wig on that pig with a touchdown bag. These bags make it! These bags made it! You cash out the plug and he just sent you an empty box. Next time, Make him put it in a touchdown bag. Cause these bags make it. No excuses. Touchdown! Yes, Sertsky, come on. They make it. Touchdown. And also, make sure to subscribe to the Black Market Vikings YouTube channel. The link will be down below in the description. Shouts out to all the homies over there. So, we are in the very early stages of this emerging legal industry. And with that, we have seen the development of brands. Before we enter this recreational era of the industry, the first iteration of brands began with strains. Strains? Well, they were the first, and now because this plan is legal, we have moved to fully commercialized brands. With this, we've seen entrepreneurs invest in packaging. And when it comes to California, many of the trends within the industry start here. In this High Design Quick Pack episode, we're going to cover the company and people behind Sticker Farmer. This is a company that really has had a massive impact on the California market, and most people don't know that. In 2017, there was a historic street campaign slash promotion that was being run by Young LB and Ray Bama, which was the catalyst that made the runt strain and brand so popular around the entire US. Now, who do you think supplied those bags for this prolific street campaign? Well. We'll get into the details later on in this video. But while the quality and flavor profiles of a new strain is extremely important, it can't be denied that packaging is also another crucial component to the modern weed markets around the world. The packaging in many ways gives identity to a strain and the people behind it, who grew it, and the whole team that sold it. Anyways, please make sure to hit the like button, share this, comment, and subscribe because we definitely need y'all to motherfucking subscribe. How do I have 10% of the viewers are subscribed? Anyways, we're on the road to 50K. This is LMC, this is another QP, let's run it. Okay, so the story first begins way back in 1996, where the founder, Ben Pachetti, first created a flower brand. Ben has always been a hustler and has always been creative and growing up in the Bay Area, well, all three things would collide. From 1996 to around the year 2000, he and his crew of his friends would be hustling, selling weed shirts, and then they moved into sweatshirts. And when Ben was 20 though, right, he would co-found a company called Chubby Greens. Now Chubby Greens was based around nightlife, promotions, art, and music. Ben would continue to work on his own businesses while also working for other independent graphic designing shops. During this time, he would learn about the sign business and how printing machines and the overall manufacturing process worked. During this time, Ben would meet his wife, Leslie Van Dalsum, who was also very artistic and motivated herself. And this would be another key building block in everything that led to Sticker Farmer. But it would take a number of years before they would form Sticker Farmer. The true precursor to Sticker Farmer was when in 2008, with a loan from his mom for $14,000, who also helped him get a $50,000 business loan from the bank, would buy three basic machines which were cap capable of doing signs, graphics, banners, and more. From 2008 until 2015, Ben would open and run his own print shop called Big League Printing. Ben and his family would live in the same warehouse where he ran his print shop. He would start big league printing with an artist named Miguel Lopez, 
where they would create shirts, banners, signs for all types of companies, from, some, from small businesses to tech startups like Tesla. During this time, Ben would be working 16 hour workdays. Being from the Bay, he was a huge fan of the Raiders and Warriors. He would wake up at 4 a.m. to go sell shirts and hustle heads outside before some of the football games. He would also sell stencil shirts with designs. For example, you know, they did designs like, you know, Mac J stencil. But during this time, Ben would stack up some money and would actually run into legal trouble with one of the biggest entertainment companies in the world for using a trademarked phrase on one of his shirts. He also had his online website shut down by the lawyers representing one of the main stars on the Golden State Warriors team. So things kind of started to add up. While this time was very stressful, he managed to come out decently unscathed, but wasn't exactly sure if he wanted to keep selling shirts and hustle heads. Still, he would continue. One day, a person who is kind of like the handler of the Golden State Warriors team reached out to Ben and asked if he could make 600 hustle head cutouts of Draymond Green, who had been suspended for game seven of the NBA Finals. Ben was hyped on this and it gave him hope and motivation that maybe he was on the right path with this business. Ben would drive to the Warriors stadium on game day in an extremely good mood and excited to finally start working with the Golden State Warriors. When he got to the stadium, this guy walked up and grabbed the 600 hustle heads, you know, said some words to him and then walked back into the stadium. Ben would wait for to come back to pay him, but instead he got a phone call from him saying that there was a mistake made and that the Warriors only wanted six hustle heads instead of 600. Well, I'm pretty sure he didn't receive any payment from them either. Now, imagine this, Ben driving on the way home Obviously angry, sad, you could say even demoralized. And then later that day, his favorite basketball team would lose the finals, blowing a 3-1 to one lead in the series, which had literally never been done before, ever in NBA history. And then the next day, Ben would shut down his printing company and start the Sticker Farmer brand. To the entrepreneurs out there listening, don't let major setbacks discourage you. Failure is about learning, and what you do after you fail is what matters. And Ben right away adapted and pivoted, which is a reoccurring theme throughout this entire story. At age 37, with $25,000 he had saved, he, alongside his wife, would begin to build the Sticker Farmer Company. Given that Ben already had the network of people, they would immediately start supplying and designing packaging and other branded marketing materials to cannabis brands in the Bay Area. For example, they started out doing designs for Lemon Tree and Golden State Banana. During 2017, Ben would change the game. And in a High Times interview, he said, quote, I cut a sticker and put it on a fucking 14 by 16 Mylar bag, he said. I made a pound bag with a sticker on it. I came up with that. It changed the game, end quote. Nowadays, this Mylar bag with a sticker is the most prominent type of packaging around the country. But back in 2017, it was still a very new thing. And as fate had it, the other major ingredient to this style of packaging coming to be so dominant in throughout the industry would be the creation of the Runs brand. Now check out this clip from the first Smoke of the Day podcast where co-founder Ray Bama explains the day they named the Run strain and created the brand. And how does this have to do with the sticker farmer? And so you knew the strain was already a keeper. You were like, yo, no, it's, this it, is it was fire. purple as fuck and it smelled like Sweet. straight Skittles. You know yeah, what I mean? I mean like, yeah. you know, it was it was the one. Like, but I was hella excited. And you were like, we just gotta bring this you know, up. Like, you know, she's like, <laughs> should we call it purple Skittles? Should we call it purple Skittles? And um I'm like, hell no, nah, right? And he gives me the pack. I, right when I open it, I'm like, oh, we open the pack right away. So it's a 15 minute drive, bro. By 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 the time before we exited, we were like runs for the Z. Really? Yeah, by the time we exited, yeah. So we call Sticker Farmer. Shout out Sticker Farmer. Oh, you guys need to get Sticker Farmer on here. He's a, you know. Yo, we gonna go stop by after this yeah, or what? You gonna let me ride in the main yeah, back? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, yeah. so, we, uh, so we call Sticker Farmer. We get a logo. So as you can see, the literal origin story of Ray Bama and Young LB creating the Runts brand 
involves Sticker Farmer. Later on that year and into 2018, Runtz would transition over from jars to these Mylar bags with stickers su supplied by the Sticker Farmer. As Runtz would grow in popularity, so would the Mylar with a sticker cutout style too, with other cannabis brands. Now, if you haven't seen the high design episode I did on Runtz, I highly recommend you go check that out. I talk about how in 2017 through 2018, Young LB and Ray Bama ran a street campaign around the country promoting the Runtz brand and strain. At the first stop of this campaign, Young LB would give Ben a call and say that he needed Runtz bags ASAP. He needed to be sent out to him immediately. And Ben and his team were the perfect match for this because they were willing to work the entire night in order to have the packaging ready to be sent out to whatever state Young LB was in at the time. From then on, Sticker Farmer would be mailing the Runtz packaging every three to five days. Wherever Young LB and Ray Bama went next, they would have a Sticker Farmer pack filled with Runtz packaging arriving at the same time they would. The packaging gave the Runtz strain brand identity. It's crazy to think if Runtz didn't have sticker farmers supplying them constantly every three to five days, sending them packs to a new state every time, that the Runtz brand may not have gotten the traction it did during this whole street campaign they ran. So given the rise of Runtz and Runtz using the sticker cutout and Mylar bags, the duo of Sticker Farmer and Runtz brought this style of Mylar bags to the mainstream and to this day are utilized by people and their cannabis brands all around the world. Now, in 2018, the Sticker Farmer company would start to really take off and later in the year they would open a new location in Mendocino and throughout the next couple of years would open five different Sticker Farmer locations all around California. Since the start of Sticker Farmer back in 2017, the company has worked with around 5,000 different cannabis brands, which when you think about it, it's fucking insane. It's undeniable that Sticker Farmer has really been a major cornerstone in the creation and branding of cannabis brands in California and beyond. Cannabis packaging in general is so important. It showcases the brand and its name, and it gives the cannabis inside that packaging something to be associated with. Now, the Sticker Farmer company today does around $5 million in sales, and they've sustained that for a number of reasons. Some of those being overall just great service to their customers, but great social media marketing, talented artists and graphic designers, Ben's wife, Leslie, installing and really running most of the company's logistics. And also the company has been great about adapting and evolving. In November of 2021, Ben's right-hand man, Jack Friedman, convinced Ben to start developing NFT projects. They started to experiment and develop different projects. And then one day, Jack showed Ben a sketch of these birds. This would be the beginning of their main NFT project called Feathered Underdog Club. And if you read the description they have on their uh, NFT site, it reads, quote, a dope art collection of feathered underdogs that grants access to members only community of creatives, entrepreneurs, and all around hustlers. Utilities include random merchandise drops, exclusive NFTs access, and more. Each drop of NFT will increasingly get more and more dope, so mint one and join the familia. So obviously when it comes to NFTs, you always want to see utility. And it looks like that's there, you know. It seems like they have a pretty vibrant community that really, you know, cares about what's going on. Right now, they're in there getting jobs out of our Discord, selling art. Now you can go in my art contest, surf through the art contest, pick your own fucking artist and work directly with them and know that they're a trusted, legit dude. It's like I'm turning my company inside out and I'm gonna make fucking the access for people fucking worldwide, like fucking right there at their fingertips. Start a project today, have it going tomorrow, have it fully in motion next week. And so what's also been really interesting too is Sticker Farmer is definitely one of the first cannabis companies or cannabis related companies to really start to dive down the NFT and actually launch these projects. They're actually, I think they've done three different projects just within the um, Feathered Underdog Club. And it's gonna be interesting because it looks like they're gonna be putting out a fourth series um, on this project, which is gonna be completely free and will involve a trading card game. So I'm definitely interested to see how that turns out. 
Overall, when I reviewed and inspect inspected their NFT projects, everything seems legit to me. Looks like they're building value and knowledge in different resources for their community. And definitely looks like they're trying to take the long-term approach, which is extremely important. Like I said earlier in the video, a major theme with Ben and his overall team at Sticker Farmer is their ability to adapt and evolve. And in a turbulent industry like this, you need to be looking to evolve, right? While they are still making plenty of money in other areas of their business, they're starting to develop out, you know, a new potential adaptation. And that's what it's about. Build a team so that you can keep doing your operations, but also expand, you don't have to experiment. Now they're obviously past the experimentation phase of this. I mean, this has been, you know, they've been, like I said, they've really developed this all out. And overall though, like I said, they have been adapting. You need to look to evolve. Companies that are stagnant for too long are definitely more susceptible to failing long-term. Now, one of the main reasons why I wanted to do a QP episode on Sticker Farmer is when I read the High Times article I mentioned earlier, I saw that Ben and his wife, Leslie, literally started the company only five years ago and have grown to you know, grown that to generate five million in sales a year. That right there, my friends, is true entrepreneurship. I say that because in that article, it explains the timeline of Ben's story, which we just went over. And you see a story that showcases constant adaptation. It showcases perseverance. And that while times were tough, Ben didn't feel defeated and didn't just give up on his entrepreneurial endeavors, but rather kept pushing and pivoting and then finally hit it big with the Sticker Farmer brand. Don't give up, keep pushing. Don't be afraid to change and don't be afraid to try new things. Anyways, this is a QP. Really appreciate y'all for listening. Big shouts out to Ben his family, the entire Sticker Farmer team. The future is looking bright. If you liked this high design QP episode, please make sure to hit the like button, share this with your friends. That really helps out the algorithm, so definitely share it, hit the like button. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. We're on the road to 50K. As well, if you want to connect with me, you can join my Discord or follow me on any of the other social medias. Links are down below in the description. Anyways, this is LMC signing out. You tired of losing packs? It's probably because that stimmy bullshit you're sending your buddy for triple the price got holes poked in it. These don't poke holes. These bags make it. Touchdown! These bags made it! This asshole didn't use touchdown bags. So now his pack's a day late. He was gonna spend his Saturday taking his kids to the park and maybe a movie. Now, these little bastards are gonna be eating Top Ramen and watching YouTube. Touchdown! These bags make it! You spent top dollar on the best exotic indoors in the world, but the mailman intercepted. Should have got a touchdown bag. Touchdown! These bags make it! I just got a call from a dear friend on the East Coast. Touchdown! My bags made it! Looks like Dickhead can't afford the new Yeezys because his shit bags didn't touch down in North Florida. Should have got a touchdown bag! These bags make it! Touchdown! Trying to sell your dep as ends? Put a wig on that pig with a touchdown bag. These bags make it. These bags made it. You cash out the plug and he just sent you an empty box. Next time, make him put it in a touchdown bag. Cause these bags make it. No excuses. Touchdown.